ChatGPT is the tool that I wish I had when I was searching for my first software job. A recent survey shows that 46% of people are using ChatGPT on their interview search. And of course, why wouldn't they? Because the alternative is spending hours and hours browsing through information on Reddit, LinkedIn, or other sources. I spent a week researching, watching, and reading everything I could find about how to properly use ChatGPT and the unique ways it can be applied to the software interview search. But most importantly, to reduce burnout while you are on the process. My name is Casey, and my goal is to help people feel less alone in their careers and lives. So during my initial job search, I remember a couple of things that would drain me out the most. Wasted time from spending hours and hours looking through online sources for career or job search advice. The constant pressure of constantly responding to recruiter emails and crafting professional responses to all of them. The nerve-wracking process of gaining interview experience, but only by first going through and failing tons of interviews first. Not knowing what to build when it came to side projects. And not really having a mentor in this space to point me in the right direction. And while individually, some of these things might sound trivial, I mean, like, come on, Kevin, like, what is so tiring about responding to emails? But the fact is that the less energy we can spend on small, menial tasks, the more energy we'll have to dedicate to things that require much more mental capacity. And what ChatGPT is great at is serving as an interviewer, a mentor, and a career coach all at the same time and provide personalized guidance based on your prompts. So let's start with the most foundational step which is fixing your resume. You see a lot of resume review posts online, but leveraging ChatGPT can really give us great insights into how to fix our resume in the most effective way. The key aspect of a good resume is forming your bullet points to accurately describe what you did at a job. And ideally, they should follow the structure, I accomplished X by the measure Y that resulted in Z. The metric portion is crucial. And ChatGPT, can make this much easier for us. Let's begin by looking at one of the bullet points of one of the first resumes I used to apply to jobs back in 2016. And some of these are objectively bad. Worked mostly with JavaScript where I created and perfected the layouts of the front end with HTML, CSS, as well as worked in the back end to bring information to the front end responsively. Holy, what is this bullet point? First of all, it's pretty evident that I didn't have any format or structure into creating my bullet points at all. And second of all, I kind of struggled with quantifying exactly what I did, leading to this weird kind of confusing bullet point. And let's take a look at what ChatGPT has to say about this. So first, we're going to be using something called role prompting, which is a technique used to control the style of the AI outputted text. You are an expert resume writer with 20 years of experience working with job seekers trying to seek a job in tech. I will be asking you advice for bullet points on my resume. You should reply only with your advice and nothing else. Do not write explanations. If you understand, reply yes. Great. So now I'll plug in my awful bullet point and see what it says. Give me suggestions on how I can add quantifiable metrics to this prompt. Worked mostly with JavaScript where I created and perfected the layouts of the front end with HTML, CSS, as well as worked in the back end to bring information to the front end responsively. Give me suggestions in the format I accomplished X by the measure Y that resulted in Z. And you can see that these suggestions are already objectively better than what I had before and offers a much more coherent insight into what I actually did at the company. Enhanced user experience by optimizing JavaScript based results resulting in a 20% reduction in page load time. But it shows how you can elevate the clarity of the bullet points on your resume. And while you might say, well, these measurements aren't real. They were just generated by ChatGPT. But the point is that you can take one of these bullet points and craft one based off real metrics that you can take from your job. The idea is that every job, every role you do has ways to quantifiably measure your success. It's just about figuring out how to bring it out. And this is important because it proves to your future employer that not only can you do great work, but you also know how to measure your success to make your boss look better. Okay, so we've gone over improving your resume, but another topic that can be unnecessarily taxing on your mind is responding to recruiter emails all the time. In my early job hunting days, I grappled with social anxiety, struggling to communicate in a professional way, and just the sheer fatigue of constantly having to think about and craft these emails. It is especially exhausting when after you spent a lot of time crafting a perfectly professional and good email to just get no response and to be ghosted, making it seem like you wasted all your time and effort and making you less likely to put in the time and effort in the future. But no more. Using role prompting in ChatGPT again, you can plug all your emails straight into it and get almost perfectly worded responses. So here I have an email thread from a recruiter that I was coordinating an interview with a while back. And a lot of time, I wouldn't really know how to properly craft a response. So 
Let's first prompt ChatGPT. You are a software engineering interview candidate for a large tech company. You have about five years experience in the industry working and are an expert with professional language and have a lot of experience in responding to emails from recruiters. I will be giving you emails to respond to. You should reply only with the email response and nothing else. Do not write explanations. If you understand, reply yes. Now, let's paste in some information from the emails I received. Respond affirmatively to this email. Nice. So we got a response from ChatGPT that can almost straight up be copy pasted into the reply. And here, let's do another example. So as a software engineer, you get a lot of emails from recruiters asking to chat about potential openings at new companies. And before I would get really nervous when I would see things like this in my inbox, because ideally the best response is to either have a chat with them to keep this connection open or ask them to reach out a couple months later. But usually out of procrastination or anxiety, I would just never respond. But again, with the assistance of ChatGPT, you can tailor perfect responses. Respond affirmatively to this email to schedule a call. Oh, nice, perfect, straight to the point. Now let's try another one to ask them to reschedule for later. Respond to this email with the general response that I would like to talk about this at another time and be polite. And again, incredibly solid, polite and to the point. These all might seem like trivial things, but the less small trivial things we have to do during our job search, the better it will be for our mental health. And the more time we can dedicate towards things that actually take a lot of time. And speaking of leak code, we can actually leverage ChatGPT to help us with leak code in multiple ways. We're gonna go over two, creating a personalized study plan and serving as an interviewer for mock interviews. These days, there are a million different study plans on YouTube or if you just Google it, but ChatGPT can personalize the plan specially for us. Let's start with role prompting as usual. You are a full stack software engineer with 20 years of experience working in the industry. You have been through the software engineering interview process numerous times, and as such, you have expert knowledge in how to crack the software engineering interview and what to study. I will be asking you advice on how to study for software engineering interviews like the ones conducted at Google. You should reply only with your advice and nothing else. Do not write explanations. If you understand, reply yes. Now let's ask it to design a study plan for a company. Let's say you want to work at Google. Design me a study plan to be able to solve a good percentage of the problems on lead code and be ready for an interview at Google. So generally pretty good. It starts spitting out a 21 week study plan. But the schedule itself can be kind of aggressive. Like if we take a look, they want us to learn all of system designs in two weeks. Yeah, it's pretty aggressive. So this is where we can ask it to drill down a little bit. Elaborate more on month one. So it begins to give us much more context into each individual topic and how to learn them. It's getting better, but it's still a little aggressive and it's missing examples, which we can ask it to give us. Continue to elaborate on the month one plan, but give more information on the individual data structures and a minimum of three questions per data structure that I can study to fully nail down each concept. And honestly, this is starting to look pretty similar to a curriculum for a course that I paid like $500 for, but let's give it even more information. Great, reformat the plan, but continue to add a minimum of 10 examples each. Yeah, so you can see here, it's just giving you everything you could possibly want out of each study plan. What we can also do is turn ChatGPT into our personal mock interviewer. Mock interviews are probably one of the best return on investments for your time in the studying process because it really gives you a sense of the real interview. But if you're like me, there is one big problem here. To do mock interviews, it requires you have a friend and a friend who is technically experienced in interviews, which is not always the easiest to come by. So again, let's rely on ChatGPT to do it for us. I want you to act as a software interviewer working in full stack web applications over a decade. You are a seasoned interviewer in software engineering, lead code style questions. I will be the candidate and you will ask me the interview questions for the position full stack software engineer. I want you to only reply as the interviewer. Do not write all the conversation at once. I want you to do the interview only with me. Ask me questions and wait for my answers. Do not write explanations. Ask me the questions one by one like an interviewer does and wait for my answers. You will be conducting a software engineering interview with a coding question pasted as follows. My first sentence is hi. So using this, let's paste in a random lead code question that I found. Let's do this one. Longest substring without repeating characters. And let's paste it in. Cool. So now the interviewer prompts us like it's a real interview. And this is where we can begin to pretend that it's a mock interview by doing it on paper, doing it on a whiteboard, doing it on our own computers. And we can even simulate the part of the interview where we can start asking clarifying questions or asking for hints from the interviewer. Let's do that now. My first thought is to use a nested for loop to iterate through every possible combination of the string and output the one with the max count. Does that sound like a reasonable solution? And you can see that ChatGPT agrees with the approach but ask you to look for optimizations, which is what a real interviewer would do because this is not the most optimal solution. And this is where you can sit down and think about the different techniques that you've learned and try to figure out the best, most optimal solution. Or 
If you get stuck, you can now ask ChatGPT for hints without giving you the answer. I'm not quite sure. I'm thinking about optimizing by removing one of the for loops somehow, but I can't grasp how. Can you give me a hint without giving me away the optimized solution? Great, so now it's giving me hints, and in other scenarios, it would prompt you to think about the sliding window approach, which would be the most optimal solution for this question. So when you use this in conjunction with your own studying tools to make and simulate a real experience, which is game-changing and will give you much more real-world experience. And even better than this, you can use it to help you with system design interview questions as well. But before we get to that, if you're curious, the way I learned everything about ChatGPT was through free online sources. And if you're passionate about free and easy way to learn new topics online, you might want to check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science concepts interactively. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you solve at your own pace. For myself, I enjoyed the interactive courses about how technology works, which takes common topics in computer science concepts and explains how they work in real systems today, like the security behind how our passwords work, how video compression works, and how recommendation engines work, which can probably give you some insight into how you got recommended this video in the first place. It's a really fun, quick, and effective way of learning, especially if you're a busy person and just don't have time to sit down and Google all these topics that you're curious about. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer for listeners. Head to brilliant.org slash KC to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. There's a 30-day free trial included with the link. The first 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. And now, back to the video. So system design is a completely unique skill that requires practice and lots of learning, just like leak code. And one of the first ways I learned how to go through system design questions was to use a five-step process. Define two to three core features, narrow down use cases, understand what to store or the database model, a high-level design, and a detailed design. Let's see what ChatGPT will give us for a framework in terms of these questions. I want you to act as a software interviewer working in full stack web applications for over a decade. You are a seasoned interviewer in system design questions. Give me a framework for thinking about and answering a system design question. Okay, so you see here it's starting to give you like a lot of steps for answering a question, which is good, but hard to remember during an actual interview. So let's tell it to narrow it down. Narrow it down to five main steps. Okay, so you can see this is pretty similar to the five-step framework that I learned. Now let's have it devise a study plan for us for system design interviews. Devise me a study plan for system design interviews for me to be able to interview at Google. Give me concrete examples. And again, it's spitting out a study plan that we can customize or tailor to our own needs. But now again, it's time for the ultimate test, acting like our interviewer. I'm gonna be role prompting it again, but this time telling it to ask me the question, design an e-commerce site like Amazon. All right, same thing as before. Okay, very interesting. Uh, it's asking me about my background. I don't want that. I just wanted to start with the question. Just give me the question. Imagine you're tasked with designing an e-commerce site similar to Amazon. Can you outline the high-level architecture of the system, including major components and their interactions? Okay, at this point, I think I'm gonna define the core features first. And great, it takes my points and it gives me a follow-up question to answer. So you can see how you can keep going here and pretending like it's a real interview, giving it more information, having it talk back to you, and et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't spoil anything by giving you the answer up front. The problem with studying for system design questions alone is that when you got stuck, the only real way to move forward was by looking at the answer, which is not really what you want when you're studying for these questions. So next up, in today's extremely competitive landscape for software interviews, side projects have almost become essential for software engineering interviews, especially for juniors. And one of my problems when I was first trying to make a side project was that I wanted to do one, but I didn't want to make the thousandth Reddit clone or Twitter clone or Facebook clone, whatever that the hiring managers had already seen. And I didn't want to use side projects from online tutorials because I felt like it was cheating. And though I know that the primary goal for side projects should be to learn and just to demonstrate that you know how to code, I wanted a differentiated side project. But ChatGPT can help you there as well. So again, we'll role prompt it. This time as a hiring manager who has seen the same side projects over and over and over again. And now let's say you wanna create something like Twitter. And already we're getting pretty unique results that aren't in the millions of side projects that a hiring manager have already seen. And all these concepts turn already are pretty unique and not something a hiring manager would see on a day-to-day -day basis. And all these were pretty great challenging questions that you could take on and learn a lot from. Let's have it explore one of these. Um, okay, so you can see now it's giving you key features, it's describing the application, it's giving you high level design. So you can choose how simple or how complicated you want it to be. So if you made it to the end of this video, it's obvious that you're extremely passionate about reducing burnout in the software engineering search. And if you want more information on how to reduce burnout in the search, I recommend you check out this video. Thanks for watching.